Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for this week's SEDS online webinar. My name is Chelsea Pedersen, and we're very happy to have you. Before we get started with the webinar for today, we'd like to thank our sponsorship for, from IAS which allows us to offer all of these resources free of charge to all of you. Uh, make sure and check out the website. There's tons of, tons of new uh, material. There are virtual field trips. All of the webinars pretty much are recorded and available for you to view on the website. Um, so next week, we have something really exciting coming your way. It's the second SEDS Online Great Debate. The topic is going to be sea level rise drowns reefs. So we're going to have two people arguing for the motion and two arguing against. In case you missed our first great debate, you can also check out that recording on the website as well. And so it's bound to be another really lively um, debate. So please make sure and join us next week, same time, same place. Today, we're really happy to have Dr. Ana Maria Alonso Zarza, who is the director of the Geological and Mining Institute of Spain. Anna received her PhD from the University of Madrid before becoming a professor in the Department of Sedimentary Geology and Environmental Change at the Institute of Geosciences. Anna has a really impressive amount of publications and accolades um, with research mostly focusing on continental carbonates. And today she's going to talk to us all about how similar or different the different types of continental carbonates actually are. And with that, Anna, please um, share your screen and we are looking forward to a nice presentation. Well, uh, hello everybody. Uh, first, I have to thank IIS and especially uh, Stephen Lockyer for inviting me to this uh, webinar. It's really very nice for me. Uh, I've been kind of one year out of proper sedimentology or properly meeting this type of people because all this uh, bureaucracy job. So for me, it's uh, a very, very nice uh, day to do this with all of you. And also I, I, I've seen that there are a lot of colleagues uh, behind the screen, so thank you for being here. Well, when um, Stephen asked me about uh, doing something for the webinar, uh, I thought, well, what a title. So I think this title from Calcrete to Travertines cover, uh, especially most of the continental carbonite types. And suddenly I thought, well, maybe they are good neighbors or not. So let's see how different, how similar, and what do they tell us in different uh, contexts? Uh, well, the continental realm is really um, barrier there are what we can call uh, water carbonates, carbonates form under the water, like uh, lakes, rivers, spring, some tufa, some travertines. Then we have less water carbonate, pedogenic, especially calcrites. Uh, some of them related some with uh, diagenesis and also including cars, uh, groundwater calcrites. And of course, we have a mix of all of this because the transition in the continental realm occurred um, very fast. So uh, we have there the palustrine carbonate which are a mix between calcrites, uh, lake deposit, and so on. So uh, it is really difficult in some places, in some situation, to put a line between the different types of carbonates or the different um, environments of carbonates. And also with diagenesis, there is a continuous uh, link between uh, sedimentation and diagenesis in the continental realm. And also these continental carbonates uh, undergo its own diagenesis and sometimes uh, very fast. So this is a uh, sketch called uh, Ildefonso Armenteros, uh, covers all these all this, uh, carbonates. And we will look today at to some of them. Uh, we will miss probably cars and, and caverns because we cannot do everything, but we will see tufa, we will see carpet, uh, uh, palustrine carbonate, also eolianite and, and lakes. Well, why to study that car this carbonate? I have to also, I, I, I tell something that happened to me when I present for a position in the council and uh, one of the person in the jury asked me, uh, why have you only worked in continental carbonates? And I said, well, 
uh, everyone works in, in the marine stuff, so someone has to look after this carboning. It was uh, almost uh, 30 years ago. So uh, I really like continental carbonates. I think they are really special. So uh, I use, I work on that because I really like, but also they are useful for many things. Uh, and they are useful because they tell us a lot of stories about our planet and also economically. So um, what else do we need to know about them? Uh, continental carbonates uh, form in land and they, they reveal the working of the earth system and the earth system with the human uh, leaves. So it is really important for us. We need um, continental areas. And also uh, continental carbonates form in the so-called critical zone. So the climate, um, biota, CO2 fluxes, uh, host rock material, eolian dust, hydrology, and uh, even persons, uh, we can really play significantly to form this uh, environment with uh, sedimentation of continental carbonates. And necessarily, all of them, calculus and travel times, must be good neighbors, although they have different interests, like in every neighborhood. So uh, I told, I like them, but sometimes I really agree. Uh, these are the Canary Island, a lot of volcanic rock, and some very few people will stop and look at this uh, white thing in a wonderful uh, land, uh, volcanic landscape. Even if in thin sections, some of them, they don't say uh, too much or, uh, from the beginning. Then we see a lot of things. We see different components, we see different mineralogies, and they really speak a lot if we ask them the, the correct questions. Some of them are really beautiful. Some of the cars carbonate, we are not going to talk about them here because I have chosen uh, yes, two areas to study, but this um, speleothene from Castañar Cave in Spain with uh, different mineralogies from aragonite, calcite, dolomite, and antite are really beautiful. So there are everything. And recently, uh, continental carbonates have become in fashion because of the discovery of the reservoirs of Brazil and Angola, the so-called uh, Presal. Although, uh, really, they were studied because uh, they were thought to be travertine, but who knows really what are they? But it, it is, was good because a lot of people started working on continental carbonate and a lot of progresses have been done on this. They are also useful for construction and these are palustrine carbonates in, in Teruel. And we, we, we will see the outcrops where this uh, rock uh, form. So they are also useful. But we are here because we are scientists and really uh, we are really interested in them scientifically. Uh, continental carbonates from in the critical zone and we can define this critical zone in the areas where life meets with rock. I, I like uh, this sentence. So it is a very heterogeneous uh, environment close to the surface. And it, incl it includes the interface between the biosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and lithosphere. So everything. And of course, it includes all the terrestrial ecosystem. So in this critical zone, that is the area where continental carbonates form, uh, there are a lot of interaction between biotic and abiotic processes. And they regulate, regulate the ecosystem and also control the disponibility the, of uh, resources that we need for our life. And also it is important to say that soils, in countries of one, soils are the larger uh, reservoir of biosphere of the planet. So we are in a real interesting uh, area. Uh, the critical zone and so the continental carbonates respond, as we told before, to biological, physical and uh, chemical processes, all related together. 
And of course, they are under the influence of climate and tectonic. And as we will see, they also respond uh, together with, with the critical zone to the effects or the impact of human in our planet. And the record of all these processes is preserved in this continental carbonate. Calcarate, cars, too fast, uh, lacustrine, palustrine carbonate, fluvial, and so on. So the main control on the sedimentation of these continental carbonates are as usual climate from arid to so humid, the morphological setting, which may include tectonism and also um, the activity of the clastic system, hydrology, of course, we can have a supply of water, sufficient or groundwater, the life is important, and also the geology of the catchment. The geology of the catchment, as we will see, can be uh, varied from carbonates, evaporites, uh, silicious rock, and volcanics, and we will see some examples of all of this. So all interplay to form a wide variety, a big puzzle of continental carbon. Uh, because today we were speaking about neighbors and uh, we have been working, I have to say that this presentation is made with the work of many people, not only my own work, you know, the work of a big team of people you will see at the end. Uh, I've been working in a lot of areas, but I thought, well, let's concentrate in two different regions to show the variety of continental carbonates in this region. So one of the region uh, refers to a more normal or habitual um, sedimentary settings like the Teruel Basin in the Northeast of Spain, which is quite uh, common or quite usual. And then the other setting uh, I've looked to show the variety of uh, continental carbonate is a um, volcanic setting where carbonates are more recent, and it is in the Canary Island, which are also really nice and very nice to work in the Canary Island. So we will uh, focus on two neighborhoods that will be a sedimentary basin, the Teruel Basin, and a, a volcanic context in the Canary Island. So uh, first we will analyze the sedimentary continental carbonates formed in ordinary or normal uh, sedimentary settings. And one is the Teruel Basin. Here we have uh, calcrete, we have tufa and travertines, and we have also palustrine and lacustrine carbonates and some cars. Uh, we were really lucky because sometimes they open for us, well, for to use in, as building material, as this building I saw you before, uh, this big quarry, so we have a really very, very, very nice uh, outcrop. We have to clean it with a very sophisticated uh, technology. So uh, the Teruel Basin in Northeast Spain uh, has a kind of uh, two branches. This is the Teruel Basin and this is the Calata Youth uh, Basin. Uh, both are uh, neogene, uh, mostly um, Miocene and Pliocene continental deposit. The sketch could be a, a semi-gravel, very elongated. This is the more active fault, and all the continental carbonates are situated in an elongated uh, area. And in this area, we have uh, calcrites uh, all over the basin, uh, palustrine and lacustrine deposit, and we have also uh, some tufas and, and travertine. In, a very relative not to big um, basin. So um, in this basin, uh, we have a quite clear stratigraphy and we analyze first the distribution of the main um, lacustrine units in the basin. So in the basin, in the, uh, in the tertiary, there are uh, three units with very different difficult names, unit one, two, and three. And we, um, because there are a lot of um, uh, mammal and paleomagnetism, it is possible to have a good uh, data on the age of the deposit. So we uh, represented the different uh, lake phases in relation to climate and tectonism. 
the main aspect to extract from this is that um, uh, the main expansion of the um, late carbonates are at the top of units and uh, usually uh, with more humid climate, okay? Like here, here, or here. But this is for all carbonates. However, in the unit third, in this more humid climate, we have gypsum. Why? Because for this moment, this uh, Triassic um, uh, rocks uplifted like a diaper, so they uh, provide the gypsum to the lake. So here we see how uh, catchment control also the sedimentology within the, within the lakes. Uh, however, if we have uh, carbonate rocks uh, where carbonate sedimentation in lake is, is favored because there will be more uh, carbonate concentration in the water, there will be less uh, silicic plastic input and we may have the recycling of uh, intravaginal carbonate. So uh, carbonate catchment will contribute to have uh, more uh, carbonate, uh, more lacustrin carbonate. Well, this is the work we did in this, in this area. We almost draw every section to show all these different sequences. And uh, similarly to Calcute, we were able to establish different stages of development of palustrine deposits in comparison with calculus. And also we could evaluate the preservation degree of the profile. So from here, no exposure, and from here, the higher exposure and finishing almost with a thin laminar calculus. Like here, in the top of some of the sequences. And here we have a lot of uh, desiccation and formation of this uh, flat table limestone in the base of some of these uh, sequences. Also these uh, sequences, the orientation and the organization of the phases can speak us about uh, how is produced the flooding of, of the lake areas. So from here, we see a very um, sharp base. We uh, interpret that the, we call them reverse sequence because they indicate fast inundation of the area and slow desiccation. And this will, will be the contrary. When we have uh, clays, development of calcuit, and then finishes on lake. For us, that will be the normal sequences and will show slow inundation of the area. Some of the um, lacustrine sequences in, in the Calatayud uh, Daroka Basin um, have been analyzed as site cyclical uh, section, uh, very clear uh, cycles, and interpreted as related to uh, Milankovic cycles here. In the tails, we will have here the wet mud flood and the shallow lake areas. These uh, areas uh, have uh, more vegetation and, and um, biota of what we expected, and we have all these uh, nice cocoons here that we can see in the thin section, these are the, the cocoons, animals, insects, living uh, especially in the dry mass flats of these uh, lake areas. And these are the traces they, 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 they left. And these are the animals that made these traces. Uh, well, of course, these animals are clever and they usually are in the drier areas of the lake, so they are either in the, the dry mass flood or in the interaction between uh, the dry mass flood and some areas with uh, higher uh, groundwater flow. Well, we are in the um, Teruel Basin. We have seen the lake and palustrine deposit. Uh, let's see the culprits in the Teruel Graben, in the Teruel, Teruel Basin and what if they tell us something. So uh, calcites appear uh, everywhere and here they appear um, underlying or showing us the unconformity between the Jurassic and the Paleogene. And in this calcit we have a uh, microcodine. Here is another example of a neogene, more modern calcite, very well laminated uh, calcite. And we have also a uh, Pleistocene calcrete showing clearly the Beidus feature 
nice Beidos uh, cement in a Pleistocene terrace of the Teruel Grande. Analyzing the different profiles, uh, we can see that calculus are different in the different areas of the basin, uh, more nodular in the flood plains, uh, more laminar in uh, slope scree and low uh, active areas of the, of the alluvial fans. But it is nice to see that we preserve microcodium in the paleogene and we have a microspherulite that are preserved only in the more recent calculus. And also in that the small basin, we have a uh, tufas and, and travertines. This is the tufas similar to other tufas worldwide in the Teruel basin. A nice uh, uh, boundstone of mosses. And here in the Teruel basin, which is uh, clearly tectonically controlled, the, the presence of these uh, tufas and also the situation of the phases is controlled by the main faults. So we have here a main fault which make that the tufa system here uh, span uh, parallel to this main fault, but also we have uh, perpendicular faults which control the distribution of the environment within this uh, tufa system. So here we have another fault and we have a beautiful uh, cascade uh, phases of the, of the tufa. So, here, uh, tufa under a clear uh, tectonic uh, control in the Teruel Basin. And we have another example um, of, of tufas travertine in the Teruel uh, Basin. What was really surprising for us, these are very hard uh, limestone compared to the Myosin Pleistocene uh, laminated uh, lacustrine limestone of the areas. Uh, we see this limestone with fenestra fenestral porosity, large bark, phreatic cement, and badeau silt. We see these faces uh, that uh, sometimes look like a uh, rough, but they are not. And all this uh, dissolution and uh, cements and badeau silt, and those features related with um, meteoric diagenesis. And, uh, Another feature is the diagenesis of the previous uh, myosin lacustrine limestone, all this uh, nice cement related to the area where it was supposed to be a travertine. Well, here, what we realize is that these phases of the travertines uh, are not really preserved, uh, especially because some of them have been used uh, for building, but what it's important and we realize is that this travertine fluid really modify the, the bedrock. So they form what we call a diagenetic travertine. So it is difficult to distinguish this diagenetic travertine to the real travertine or even uh, for the initial um, bedrock. And also the effect of the circulation of fluid on limestone really have a, a, a important economic significance because control the permeability distribution and also the formation of rocks that can be used for buildings, all this. So this is not really a big travertine, it's really that the travertine fluid modify the previous uh, rocks. Well, uh, if we look at the isotopes, if we see the different uh, Sedimentary phases in the Teruel Basin, uh, they are really good neighbor. The, the isotopes are very similar in the, in the previous Myosin um, unit, Lake and Palustrine and Calprit. These are the, these are the, the diagenetic travertine and these are the tufa. We can distinguish because, because of the isotope, the different um, sedimentary carbonate but they have very similar uh, meteoric uh, imprint in their values. So we have seen one, one neighborhood, let's see the other one. So we pass now to the beautiful uh, Canary Island. So why to look uh, carbonates, continental carbonates in uh, Canary Island with this beautiful uh, landscape in El, in El Hierro. Well, Canary Island um, are really special because um, 
they are uh, very near to Africa, of course, and they uh, have uh, the, the, the influence of uh, this um, Aeolian dust coming from the, from the Sahara. Uh, here in the Canary Island, we have culprits, we have Aeolianite with large uh, bisolith, we have tufa and uh, travertines and uh, lacustrine and karst carbonate are rare in, in, this, uh, in this island. In this volcanic setting, the sedimentary systems have less le development in relation with the usual continental sedimentary basin as the Teruel basin that we have uh, analyzed. The preservation potential is lower due to the higher instability, due to volcanism, slow processes, and erosion is dominant uh, in relation to sedimentation. So let's see what happened in here. And here you see the distribution of this uh, Saharian Ag layer that really um, carry a lot of aeolian dust with a lot of calcium to the island. So calcar profiles in the Canary Island are impressive. They are uh, thick, uh, in this case, more or uh, seven meters. They are multi-story. They for one profile, another, 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 and in case one modifies the other. So there are compound profiles, and sometimes they are more simple, like here or here. But there are a wide variety of profiles. This is from Gran Canaria Island, but there are also in, in the other island. Um, the host rock here is uh, varied, but there are uh, lava flows, there are gravels and sands with a lot of uh, volcanic uh, fragments, uh, mudstone, uh, also with gravel fragments, but also uh, some of the sand uh, in some areas uh, near the sea, especially, they have some also um, bioclast. They are full of uh, trace uh, fossils also. So uh, this uh, corresponds to one of the um, thickest uh, profile, uh, laminar, different scale lamination, as we will see. Uh, there are a lot of calcified roots, and uh, we see that in cases, they, they are rechated and so some pseudo-anticlines. We have here large, large piece of it. You, you see the hammer, so it's, quite nice to see how it formed, that the sediment uh, is broken and then the micro coats different areas and then this, this produce the lamination, the cortex of this uh, large uh, piece of it. In the tails, these are the lamination of the piece of it, different types of micrite, uh, more massive laminated with oil, with uh, grain and so on, and the nucleo of the piece of it also is full of oils. Uh, oolithic horizons, oils, nice oils here, perfectly regular and rounded. They look like uh, marine oils, but they are not. These are the oils with these uh, coatings. Uh, the coatings are complex. This case is one of the more complex uh, mineralogy of the oil, because some of them are uh, carbonate, but there are some cases organic matter, and in some cases, these um, coatings, regular coatings, are isotropic. And these coatings are rich in silica, they are rich in magnesium, and so we think that these are um, not very crystalline material and probably magnesium rich clays. The laminar horizon have also a uh, microspherulite, like calcaries in, in the Teruel Basin. And here the profile, these are from other islands, but the, the processes are similar. Um, we interpret that the thick calcaric profiles uh, respond uh, to large uh, scale cycles of climate. And that cause different uh, events of sedimentation and uh, calcaric formation. When we look at the thin uh, alternation, that uh, relatively respond also to the changes between uh, sedimentation, calcar formation, and erosion. In the Canary Island, the situation is so special that contrary to what happened in most of the um, other areas, uh, calcaries form in the relatively more arid periods, 
with the other sedimentary basin is uh, the contrary. They form in the more arid uh, period. And we will uh, try to evaluate the role of uh, oleand dust later. Uh, here, uh, the variety of minerals is uh, impressive. And we have uh, some culprits uh, dominated by dolomite and uh, with the presence here, some dolomite, with the present and special mineral, zeolite, uh, chabasite, which have a lot of um, uh, aluminium, calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium with this nice um, radial structure here. These are uh, chabasite in profile from, from Lanzarote. And this is the chabasite, this zeolite under the microscope. More things we can see in the culprits from Canary Island are the trace fossils uh, made by insects. And in these cases, you can see the cocoons, some of the holes or the inner part of the cocoons. And, but all of these, you see here, these are pisolates. And the surprising thing is that the pisolates are made, the nuclei of the pisolate are these cocoons, these trace fossils. So I'm going to close the window because it has open and it's a lot of noise. Excuse me. So this trace fossil, this, sorry, this pistol is formed on the nucleus of, of trace fossil. The trace fossils in, in Canary Island are beautiful and there are many, 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 many. They are everywhere. So here you have an example of, this, of these cocoons. There were life in the calculates. And uh, some other feature, uh, very nice to see in the Canary Island are these uh, large uh, rice solid. This is what we call the mega rhizolite in Eolian. This is in Gran Canaria. But this is also in Gran Canaria, these vertical cylinders uh, up to one meter high and 10 to 30 centimeters in diameter. And uh, there is a sonation, the, the, the inner part sometimes is, is missing. This is a fine um, white coating and all this uh, external cortex that is uh, cemented usually by aragonite. Well, I have to say that this uh, structure, uh, some people have interpreted them as a seismic structure. I don't know how. Yeah. Let's move to the tufa and travertine in the Canary Island. This is Gran Canaria. And we have some buildings with uh, tufa and travertine here. Uh, Different, a wide variety of uh, micro and macro phases, and a wide variety of mineralogy. We have aragonite and we have also calcite. And these are um, a structure in some of them um, interpreted as um, uh, organic. Uh, also, we have uh, nice coated grains like in the, in the calculates, but quite different. And this nice structure, some uh, with uh, rough uh, flow calcite or flow aragonite, typical of travertine environments, but also of uh, uh, karst environment. Typical phases of uh, travertine, these uh, dendrites in this case of aragonite, and this uh, rough of uh, floating calcite here. In cases they are also uh, aragonite. And we really were surprised by these uh, calcified uh, bubbles, uh, in this case of aragonite. We have also uh, tufas in the Canary Island, in, in cases there are just tufas, or in cases they correspond to the distal uh, system of the travertines. There are natural cases, um, the tufas are calcite. And there are also some anthropic um, cases. So the tufas, they are quite indurated, a lot of uh, vegetal structure here, uh, typical, uh, same as tufas in sedimentary environment. 
uh, similar as TUFAS in the sedimentary environment. All these uh, funds occur also in some sedimentary environments and uh, more sample of this uh, TUFAS. In cases they have this uh, coarse crystalline texture marking the, indicating the, the lamination on this uh, dendrite. But what is really surprising in the Canary Island, and we are uh, having more and more days, uh, we have information on more of this system, is uh, these uh, anthropogenic cases. I will show you um, three of these cases. This is a, a, a small valley, and it is filled by this um, carbonate. Here was the previous channel where the water um, were, were circulating and all of this here and these are uh, vagonates on the channels here. And you can see the large volcanic boulders, the cascade, and this small vagonate totally uh, not encrusted but coated by this uh, carbonate. Here it is um, aragonite and calcite. And all of these are the remains of instruments that were used to cave the galleries, uh, the galleries needed to, to get the water and are coated and embedded by carbon. Uh, the faces here are really nice, like uh, per case, uh, on coits. Uh, in this case, uh, they are aragonite. We have not done a lot with this yet. And the, the, the system we have studied more recently is this uh, Lomomorin system, which is a nice uh, tufa here. The inactive area, the active area now, uh, boundstone of coated stain and boundstone of um, green algae. In this case, all is calcite like here. So these are the, 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 where the algae, the green algae leaf and it is coated by this um, carbonate that it is calcite. And at the end it, it gets a um, spheroidal uh, system. Well, this is uh, the way this, this uh, system forms, especially the last one. Um, the water in this area of Tenerife is obtained, the water for irrigation of, the, um, of agriculture, and in this case of um, banana, uh, banana plantation, they excavate uh, galleries, they get the water here, they make the water circulate but an artificial channel, and they spill the water from the slope and then they get the water down to, to irrigate the banana plantation. Well, this is a nice system. Uh, it's a natural uh, system of depurated water and to get the water for irrigation with, uh, with less calcium. When the water uh, gets out of the gallery, they lose the CO2 and so we got the precipitation of carbonate on the, on the vegetation that is here. And all of this is done in less than 40 years. Just to see some of the images here, uh, this is um, the artificial channel in the slope, and this is the spill of the water, and all this is the too far we have, we have seen. If we go back uh, 40 years, there was nothing. So we really are uh, generating carbonates, continental carbonates in volcanic uh, settings. And there are other cases, uh, this is in Gran Canaria, uh, just to show how, um, how human can uh, control the formation of, of this carbon. This, is, this look like a typical tufa. We found this uh, coated grain here, I, I got it, and it was really light, very, very light. When I open this, this is what I see, polystyrene in the middle of the nuclei of the of the coil. Well, how to date that? Uh, this uh, polystyrene was patented in 1950 and in Spain it started uh, the fabrication in 1966. So we have a date for all this. This is the polystyrene and the carbonate coating. But what was more uh, interesting is that we observed all this lamination in the crystalline crust of the, of the different uh, oncoids and part of the building. And it was possible to correlate the different uh, scale lamination with the scales of irrigation 
of the of the banana plants uh, below. So we have the the order of the of the living plant uh, three years, and then orders of autumn, spring, and even um, the daily order preserve the lamination of this uh, bounce. No? Just a curiosity. Well, it was so curious that it called the attention even of the journalist, and this is the main journal in Spain, and we got the last page of this of the journal. So we are really happy with that. Well, let's see to the uh, geochemistry of, of this um, of these uh, rocks in the Canary Island. Here we have only the tufa and travertines, and we have uh, included the natural one, which is uh, temisas, barrazales, and azuaje, uh, and this is anthropogenic. So we see this, uh, the oxygen is negative, but the carbon is positive. So it is indicating um, input on, uh, of uh, endogenous uh, CO2, deep CO2. However, if we look at the culprit, we see that the carbon is negative and the uh, oxygen is also negative. And we have uh, some um, less, uh, less, less negative positive values in the profiles with, um, with dolomite. And also in Gran Canaria, uh, we have uh, lightest uh, values in, in profiles that um, we sample in higher altitude, not the near the sea that are this, this area. So I saw those clear, uh, so the difference between um, travertine stufa and uh, culprits in the Canary Island. And also in the Canary Island, we made a strontium ratio and well, it is uh, quite clear that these are the Calcris from Gran Canaria. These are the calcris from Lazarote and Fuerteventura. This is the signal of the Aulian dust, and this is the signal of the marine phanerozoic. If we look down, this is the signal of the travertines and tufas from Gran Canaria, and these are the volcanic from Gran Canaria. So it is clear that the south of calcium from here are the volcanic rocks, and the south of calcium from here is the Aulian dust from the Saharan, from the Sahara. Well, this is another example, including the last uh, anthropogenic example we see, the Lomo Marine, which is similar to the other um, to the other tufa uh, um, travel times in the Canary. So they are really uh, here; they are more different uh, the, the, the culprits from the other. They are not so uh, uh, good neighbors in the Canaries. They are more different. So just to to summarize. Um, uh, we have seen a lot of things, uh, but only a few. So I selected some of the features of all um, the carbonate we've seen in the two different areas. So from calcris, in both cases, the profiles are complex. In sedimentary basin, in this sterile basin, because in the Madrid basin, the mineralogy is more complex. It is calcite, whereas in the volcanic uh, context, we have calcite, dolomite, and magnesium-rich uh, silicates. The um, calcium probably comes from the oil and dust in both settings. In the climate, the most uh, suitable is semi arid. And the um, values uh, in both cases from calcium, oxygen, and carbon are mostly negative. We don't have mega resolutes in the Teruel Basin, uh, but we have uh, mega resolutes and large cylinders in the Canary Island. Trace fossils are very common in the Canary Island, but are rare in the sedimentary basin and are rare in the um, tertiary sedimentary basin all along Spain. Yeah, I, can, I can tell you. Uh, with respect to tufa and travertine in the Teruel Basin, the mineralogy is calcite. In the volcanic setting, we have calcite and aragonite. The um, texture are quite uh, varied uh, in the Teruel Basin and also in the Canary Island. Uh, the origin of the calcium is, is different in the Teruel Basin. Sorry, this is confused. This is in the other, sorry. Uh, here it's sedimentary limestone and here is uh, deep volcanic. This is, uh, this is not correct. And for the isotopes in the Teruel Basin, all are negative. And in the Canary Island, the oxygen is negative and the carbon is positive. 
we don't have this type of deposit anthropogenic in sedimentary basin, but we have them in the, in the Canary Island. And with respect to the lack of stream palustrine, we don't have or are very rare in volcanic settings, but we have a wide variety in, in sedimentary basin. Mineralogy in the Teruel basin is mostly calcite, but in other basin it can be uh, also dolomite or more complex. The climate is uh, semi-arid to sub-humid. The tectonism is really important here, and also for the for the tufas and travertines in the Teruel Basin, and the uh, calcium source comes from the sedimentary uh, carbonate. Please correct this because it's confused. And just to finish, uh, and specifically for these two neighborhoods, the Teruel Basin and the, and the Canary Island, uh, the, these continental carbonate, carbonates are a unique record of the characteristics and evolution of the critical zone through space and time. They contain, as we've seen, information on the terrestrial ecosystem, the insect, uh, climate, evolution of the sedimentary environment, hydrology, south rock, tectonism, and even human activity. We can use this rock as reservoir building material, as unique landscape that we can visit and are beautiful, and also they can be uh, things for CO2. In detail, this carbonate show how the biotic communities conquer the soils. They show the interference with the host rock and the influence of the mechanism of mineral precipitation and dissolution. The diagenesis is complex and sometimes it is really fast. And also there are other sedimentary neighborhoods with more complex mineralogy, depending on host rock and climate, but this is other uh, story. And well, part of the group that has been working with me for all this year, and I'm really thankful to all of them because field work and microscope is nicer with them. And thank you for your attention. And meanwhile, I'm trying to correct this. this uh, well, I don't know if I can. Uh, well, thank you. This is all. Thank you, Anna. What a great talk. Um, yeah, no, no worries about trying to correct um, that last slide. I think since it's it's all recorded, people can just sort of pick up on that. Um, anybody that didn't see the message in the chat, we are now taking questions if you have any for Anna about um, her discussion. And I know that we already have one in there from Axel. So our first question is from Axel Munica from Erlangen, Germany. And he's wondering how the ooids with the magnesium rich clay coatings form. I would like to know that also. <laughs> um, we think that um, it is related with the weathering of the, of the volcanic rocks because usually we have this, um, this I saw only one, but sometimes we have the, the first coating in cases are these uh, magnesium rich clays and then we have normal carbonate. So probably it's a kind of reorganization of the weathering products of the, of the volcanic rocks within the soil. And this occur mainly in rocks that they have uh, also uh, dolomite. This is one of our next uh, research, if we can. Perfect. Um, so while we're waiting for thing, if, I can, uh, if I can add something, yeah. uh, I'm thinking quite a lot on the origin of oils in, in culprit. And I think most of them are related with the um, role of insects. Roles of, uh, of insects, is that what you said? Yep, yeah, insects. Okay. In some cases, yeah, yeah. some of them. Um, so while we're waiting for other questions, I have some of my own <laughs> stored up. So I was curious if any of the continental carbonates that you were looking at are particularly more susceptible to alteration than some of the others. Or basically, like, can we sort of generalize a rank of preservation potential between the different types? Well, uh, the, the important thing is they, they get indurated or not. And uh, most of the continental carbonate uh, are indurated, and probably they are indurated because they are in the subaerial exposure, so they get a lot of desiccation and wetting, so they get hard uh, very easily, and they help to preserve them. So uh, in a way, uh, they are quite resistant as if, if they get uh, indurated. Um, areas of uh, deeper light, lakes are uh, softer, and they are more weathered than, than this other. 
So in a way, they are quite resistant uh, in sedimentary basin. Of course, in the volcanic setting is different. Do you think that um, amount of organics within the different types of deposits also play a role? So when, when you have the wetting and drying processes occurring um, and working on the organic degradation, sort of creating those yeah. acids. Yeah, because uh, the organic, uh, there are very little preservation of, of uh, organic things in, in this carbonate because they are very oxidizing environment and also because the, the, the wetting and drying of the system. Yeah. Okay, our next question comes from John Reimer, um, coming from Amsterdam. Or I'm sorry. <laughs> the, no, the, when yeah. I know the time, <laughs> I will retire. I always tell that. Uh, well, in some cases, a few years. Uh, actually, um, I, I didn't show the example, but we have an example in the Madrid basin of a carpet that is forming now, so it's really fast. But in other cases, it is it's longer. And also, we don't know what is preserved. Uh, sometimes are part that are um, er 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 eroded, so, so we don't know. So let's say from hundreds of years to maybe thousand, thousand, um, hundred thousand years. Okay, that's a, that's a big range. Obviously, I would like to know, but it is not possible for me. Yeah, and then um, he wants to know if there are any differences between um, the two locations. Sorry? He wants to know, the second part of his question is if there's any differences between those two locations. And the, yeah, the, well, the main difference are the, the, the mineralogy between in the in Canary, we have a dolomite and we have these uh, clays and these uh, special oils. Also the amount of oils that in the Canaries there are a lot, lot of oils and in, in Teruel there are not. Uh, and what else? Uh, well, because of the age in the Canaries, we don't have a microcodium. The host rock is different and probably the, the profiles are thicker and harder in the Canaries. Okay, and I'm not sure if this is what um, what John was intending for for that part of the question, but is there any difference between the two locations in terms of time that it takes, or that you think <laughs> the time that it takes for those deposits to form? Yeah. Well, time depends on the also on the type of culprit. In in Gran Canaria, we have uh, some that are uh, thin um, lamina of carbonate between clays, and of course this is fast, similar to some of the Teruel Basin, but the thicker profile um, probably represents similar times. Also depends if you look in a more active sedimentary environment or less active. If you are in a less active, like in, in how to say, in marginal areas of the Teruel Basin, probably take more than if you are having, um, like in the Canaries, a continuous supply of, uh, of calcium because of the oil and dust. So probably in, in the Canaries, uh, in some cases, the formation of the calcite is faster than in Teruel. Thank you for the question. I have to think more about that. Yeah, can be a next topic of research as well, maybe. Um, okay, so I had one more for you. So I was curious, and, and I, I hope that I got this correct, but when you're talking about the travertines from the Canary Islands, um, talking about the mixture of mineralogy, both aragonite and calcite, I'm wondering if, so within one deposit, do you think that it starts to precipitate originally as aragonite, and then basically as ions are depleted within the formation fluids, then it starts to precipitate calcite sort of as a secondary option? We, we have seen uh, aragonite and calcite in one system in Gran Canary Island. And yes, it's like you say, in more proximal areas with a higher temperature and probably uh, faster the gassing, we have aragonite. And when you move distally, you also you not only uh, change the mineralogy, but also the texture. So mm -hmm. you pass from the travertine to the tufa. And along the change, you move from more aragonite to no aragonite at all and calcite. Okay, so then you also have um, a difference in temperature as well. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's a big role. 
All right, so we have the next question from Fiona Whitaker coming from Bristol. Um, wonderfully illustrated talk, thank you. You mentioned um, dolacretes on the Canary Islands. What is the magnesium source for these? We think that from the volcanic rock. But this is not really, how to say, this is not much magnesium incorporated in the carpet. It is incorporated, how to say, in the, in the boundaries, in some cases, in the boundaries um, between the weathering areas of, of um, grains, um, bedding plains, and, and so on. So it's related to the weathering of the, of the volcanic rocks. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna share screen. Oh, we have, yep, <laughs> okay. I was just going to get into our plug for next week's talk. Um, we have our second great debate. So here you can see our, um, yeah, our flyer for this great debate. And so our second great debate is gonna have the topic of sea level rise drowns reefs. And we will again have two people arguing for the motion and two people arguing against the motion. Um, it will be July 7th, like I said, at the same time, 4 p.m. UK time, your usual um, sets online webinar link. And if you have any friends that are interested in this topic and want to join, you can find all of the information um, at setsonline.com for them to sign up. And with that, um, Maria, uh, or Anna Maria, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate um, you coming on and giving a webinar. I'm definitely interested in this topic, so I'm, I'm really glad that you came on. And um, I'm sure all of the people in the audience will join me in thanking you for your participation today. Okay, thank you to IIS for inviting me to this. I really enjoy it. Well, I took so many other examples, but. Yes, I got to select some of them that were concentrated in some area. And thank you for coming, all these friends that I see all your names here. And it is a pity that we have not been able to see in, in Prague. But I hope that next year we can meet all together and participate in the meeting as usual. So yes. thank you. And everything you may need or whatever, just contact me. Okay. Thank you and see you thank all next you. week. See you.